we have with us, before I introduce our amazing speaker, uh, just one reminder, if you want to catch last week's video, to check it out at www.command.io or digitalexperiencecenter.com. Um, for today's talk, we have deck engineer Daniel Huster. Um, the topic is Reality 2.0, focusing on augmented reality.
Again, it tries to place the user inside of a virtual world, and anything that can do to improve that, they're trying to do that. Whether it's 360 degree sound, uh, whether it's tracking your hands now, your head, uh, tracking your head, tracking your body movements with like the HTC Vive, uh, the, more, <coughs> the more immersive the better. And it's becoming really, really immersive, almost to a point of uh, kind of scared because there's people that have said they'll go on like these three hour time uh, where they're just playing these virtual reality games and they come out and it starts to become a little weird for them because now they're in real reality but it's kind of different. Like it takes time for them to adjust to that, which is kind of odd when you think of it, but that's how immersive these environments are being. So, uh, a quick video for those that have not seen virtual reality. Um, just got a quick video to show what these things look like. Right here are two different viewfinders, and so what they, did, they determined was they split the view um, and allowed you to have stereoscopic view, so you can adjust it, it makes the 3D way better. And um, this video specifically doesn't show the individual moving their head left to right, but there's no reason that it could. And it's also for the Google Cardboard. So again, it's one of those really, really painful apps. So I'm just going to show a brief portion of this. <coughs> They've shown uh, individuals that are wearing this and they'll like film them as they're doing it. And their body will actually try and adjust to move out of the way because it's convincing. It might not seem as convincing right here um, because you're looking at it from quite a few feet away and non stairs up the beach. But if you experience it, it can be very convincing, especially if you add in a couple other things like a chair that moves with it. So again, technology is here, it's available and it's already a consumer science. So, so where do we go from here? Um, again, I didn't want to rehash virtual reality. We've had talks in here before. Uh, we had an individual a couple months ago came up with the Oculus Rift and talked about that. Uh, so I didn't really want to hash it out because a lot of people know about it. They know where it's coming. I talked about virtual reality because it's a good uh, starting point, but not all these realities are the same. Again, virtual reality is very focused on immersing you inside of an environment. The next phase is moving into taking those virtual elements and applying them to our world. So uh, who here has heard of the term augmented reality? Okay, wow, that's great. Uh, who here has used an augmented reality app? Okay, a couple of them. Um, so augmented reality is a, a newer concept, and I, I say newer because it's been around for quite some time. Uh, there was some major development in this around 2009 and stuff, and there's some really cool things coming out about it. Um, but it's starting to get a little bit more focus. And there's already many consumer-ready applications out there. Pokemon Go, who's here heard of Pokemon Go? It was the number one app for a whole month that people were to use. But it is probably the most famous Pokemon. Now, who's here heard of Google Glass? Yeah, a couple years ago, that thing was big. People were complaining about you walking in the store with it. Um, who's here heard of Project Tango? Yeah, um, that last one I'm going to get into a lot more today uh, because I really find that it's got some really good ideas and it's pushing this technology pretty far. Uh, so essentially what augmented reality is, uh, and I'm put up here to differentiate between virtual reality and augmented reality. While virtual reality focuses on placing the user into a virtual world, Again, augmented reality is focused on overlaying graphics into the real world. And how it does that is it doesn't just display an image to you. It's going to do that through a camera, through the lens of the camera. That's primarily how it's being done. So while virtual reality tracks you, the user, primarily your head position, augmented reality is also trying to track the world. And that is proved to be difficult. It's improving. And we've got lots of uh, libraries out there that solve a number of the issues that we've had.
But that is the place where it was stuck for quite a while. See, what it needs was uh, to track the world, what it was using was things called markers and interest points. Essentially what those things are, are points that a camera recognizes as like, this thing's defined. This thing's not moving, I know what this thing is, and I'm gonna try to track it as each frame of the camera comes in. Well, to do that can be fairly intensive from a processor perspective. But now, we have cell phones with eight gigs of RAM in them, and quad-core, hexa-core processors. So this, this becomes less of an issue. Um, so a lot of the things that were holding back aren't doing so anymore. And while virtual reality focuses a lot on immersion, augmented reality is focusing a lot on utility. What do I mean by utility? Specifically, the number of, the very applications you can have with this are extremely fast. As opposed to just saying, okay, you're now in a world where you're experiencing the top of Mount Everest. We're saying, hey, you're in a foreign country, you can't read the language because you don't know it. Well, if we use augmented reality, all these things that are completely foreign language, we're gonna translate for it, translate for you, and we're gonna just overlay those translations for you. So now, that language barrier becomes that much less. Maybe you're in a city that you don't know, and you don't know how to walk places, and you bring up Google Maps, and as opposed to just looking at your phone the entire time, it's displaying where you're going on the ground. Or maybe you're a student and you're trying to learn about, uh, maybe you're a doctor, uh, you're trying to learn to become a doctor. They can now display 3D models that you can go up and experience places that just, uh, here's this muscle, or this is how this muscle reacts when you move uh, the arm in such a way. There's a lot of applications here and it's not been used to its fullest, not yet. One of the places we see it a lot is with marketing materials. If you've dealt with Taco Villa, all, they have their own app that they love to display little 3D models on. And that is currently what a lot of augmented reality is being used as. That is just the tip of the iceberg. So, um, some different uh, applications, games, navigation, translation, education, and the interior decorating is actually one, believe it or not, a lot of people use. So if you're in a room and you're like, I want to know what this piece of furniture looks like before I buy it inside my room, you can bring up these applications, place that couch, that painting within your room, walk around, see how it feels, see how the actual space changes with that. Um, this application over here was shown off at Google I.O. Uh, it is using Project Tango. Again, I'm gonna be getting into that a little bit. But Project Tango, uh, using the new uh, cameras that are coming out with Project Tango, they were able to display these 3D models of dinosaurs. And they can scale them up to room size. And one of the ones that they showed was the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and how big, and it literally filled the entire room. And you don't get that sense of scale from the picture. That sense of scale comes when you start to walk around in the environment, like you know how big this chair is. And when it's as big as the toe of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, you start to feel that scale. And that, was, uh, that is allowed through this technology. It's now not us going into that world, it's those graphics coming from ours. So here's a quick video, and I think it does a really good job of demonstrating what the baseline of augmented reality is. Um, if you've used augmented reality before, this is kind of like the starting point. Again, going back to that Taco Bell example, Here's a box and I'm going to display a 3D model. So again, augmented reality is going to track these images. So it recognizes these images. It says, okay, I know what this is. I'm going to display a 3D model. Maybe it's a teddy bear. Maybe it's a, some ninja. But it's going to track those positions. And then as they move, that model will orient itself to that. It also will do it with uh, using gyroscopes and pretty much anything else that they can determine 
direction of what it's trying to track. This was using the Euphoria library with Unity 3D. Okay. Okay, so again, how does it work? Uh, gyroscopes and other uh, sensors are going to track your device, but the main magic happens within the camera that's going to track the world, and it creates a point cloud. And this is where a lot of this technology is headed. So within this point cloud, it's again grabbing these interest points, in these corners, and these markers. So uh, this is a, it's a little bit hard to see, but essentially this camera is mapping what it's recognizing as this is an interest point. I can reliably rely on this thing not to move. And It'll grab corners uh, often. Uh, in, this, in this specific room, it has a bunch of uh, posters on the wall, so the corners of those posters it will uh, track. And as you move your device, it'll track the flow of that to make this move smoother. Now, what that's, a bit, what that's heading towards is this mapping of the world. Uh, it helps a lot with the collusion, and I'm going to get into that. But this technology is starting to move in, instead of saying, okay, I'm going to look at these just these specific interest points, these markers. I'm going to start mapping a, a model of the room. <coughs> and what that does is give you a lot of flexibility as opposed to saying, okay, this piece of, uh, this chair moved, but this table's still here. So now I'm not reliant on this, this chair to stay in its position. I've already got a map and I can adjust to that world as it changes. So the current challenges for augmented reality is its presence in the marketplace. Believe it or not, if you have a cell phone in your pocket right now, you have every required piece of hardware to run an augmented reality app. It's widely available. There's lots of apps. Some have done well, some not done so well. But the truth is, is that it's been very mixed adoption. And I believe this mixed adoption really comes into play with the fact that what the hardware runs on right now is your cell phone. Uh, when I was in college, I worked on an independent study where I actually built out an augmented reality application that through uh, going through the computer science department, I could bring out my phone and scan the plate numbers for the rooms. It would display either the lab schedule or who, uh, what class was running, what professor was running. And it worked pretty well. It just was, uh, to be honest, clumsy. Because it would have been just as fast to bring out another app, type in the room number, and get a lot more information. A lot quicker. Because phones are meant to be in your hands, not always in front of your face. So that's where a lot of this next challenge is, is the hardware design is not the problem. It's just not user friendly. Because augmented reality to be truly successful has to be in your peripherals. You have to be able to see through it. Project Tango devices like the Fab 2 Plus that just came out, these things are actually being sold in hardware stores. Uh, it's just a really big phone. Um, but that, the intention of that is to be able to work in construction. So now what you're able to do is say, okay, I can hold up my phone and measure the distance from this to this and determine how much material it's going to be or how high this wall is going to be. Or maybe I got to destroy this wall, how much of it do I need to destroy? So that's what this Fab 2 is trying to accomplish. But there's a couple other companies like Meta and Aether and Google Glass from the place of why uh, when it's coming up, is they're trying to bring head that you can have on your face, but always keep this augmented reality in your peripherals. They're coming. They've got dev. Uh, kits already out and available, uh, and they're improving. A couple other re uh, challenges that we're having is realistic lighting, determining what the lighting is within a room. It's one thing to track uh, a stationary object. It's completely different when you're trying to track light. However, Project Tango, I mentioned it before, they're trying to tackle this. They're also trying to tackle probably the biggest thing, which is occlusion. Currently, with augmented reality, you place it Hard, like the example was, on a table, and then place something above it, it loses track of it. Because again, augmented reality is tracking images, 
not necessarily work yet. Uh, Project Tango, on the other hand, wants to solve that. So, if you're interested in looking into augmented reality, there's a couple libraries that I've got right here. I personally have used Euphoria with Unity. Unity 3D is a video game uh, 3D engine, but it works really, really well with these libraries, so they make it quite a bit Project Tango is, again, Google's uh, solution, and it also works with Unity. Um, again, I've used Euphoria and Unity, and I've been looking at Tango. So, thanks for that. This is what I believe is the natural progression model. Has anyone heard of mixed reality? All right. So mixed reality is <clears throat> essentially uh, augmented reality, but the better. And the companies that are involved with this, Microsoft and that Magic Leap, are very staunch in saying that their stuff is mixed reality, not augmented reality. Through my experiences, though, I really don't feel like they're, I think they're both trying to accomplish the same thing, and just mixed reality is, again, the natural progression. See, what it's going to try and do, uh, well, I'll get to that. Uh, basically, it's the newest concept. It merges the best of augmented reality and virtual reality, and currently it's not considered that. Um, because what it's going to try and do is it's literally going to try and make every part of the world a virtual world, in a sense. It's wanting its graphics to not only be something that, inter that it can track and display, but it wants you to be able to interact with it, and it wants to be able to interact with the world. Like if a chair comes in front of it, it wants to be able to know that it's there and move around it. If you uh, move a block with your hand or with your voice, it wants to be able to react The difference is, again, uh, I put up mixed reality and augmented reality, and they're actually quite similar. With mixed reality, like, you're looking at mapping peripheral. That's how it's placing stuff. It's determining what the world looks like, and then using that to determine how it's going to display the graphics. Whereas, again, augmented was anchored by images. Mixed reality is very focused on flexibility. It's not enough for it to say, I want to be useful to an individual. It wants to literally be in your, it wants to replace things. Uh, Microsoft HoloLens uh, is advertising the fact that you can put a 55 inch TV up on your wall and then scale it up to a 70 inch. It's wanting you to be able to put a new TV in every single room that you want. It through its technology. And I'm not talking like an actual TV, but a virtual one. It's also wanting to be able to put lampstands that change, maybe based on the day <coughs> when it's snowing outside, it's gonna try and change what it looks like to reflect that day. So it's not enough for mixed reality currently to just say, here when you want. And this is why I believe this is so very, very important because a lot of money is going into this. This is not something that says, okay, I'm an Apple Watch. You can use me every day. I really think they're trying to place this in such a way that it's your cell phone. The type of cell phone that like, you can't live with that. Because this is going to change how consumers interact with the reality. This is a brief example. This is a live demo at E3 that Microsoft demonstrated about their HoloLens headset. So currently, the camera that they're filming with this is seen through the lens of the HoloLens. Like they actually said it the So again, this is not a backdrop. This is actually using the system to draw up this viewfinder.
create growth. So again, it recognizes that and it starts to build. For those that have had kids or have actually played Minecraft, builds a Minecraft world on tape. And the promise is, is that once it's built, you can go back to it and you just save it. So if you took your headset off and came back later, you'll be in the same position. Again, what you're seeing is the occlusion factor, where it's solved that. So now this graphic is displaying in front of the individual. So if you're interested in mixed reality, uh, right now, Microsoft HoloLens that has dev, uh, dev devices out, it's quite expensive. The promise is that it's not going to be as expensive when it gets into the consumer's hands, but I believe they're trying to do that by 2017. Uh, it's also got a HoloLens emulator and universal Windows apps. If you build something with that in mind, it should just Project Tango is where I believe you, if you really want your first taste of this, this is where you probably want. Google's not advertising Project Tango as a mixed reality, but it is trying to solve many of the things that mixed reality is. It's trying to solve the occlusion factor. Um, in, their, in their example, uh, Google I.O., they showed how it's already working, and how they were able to, on stage, have a little pretty cat walk around a podium, recognized it was there, and would not go into it. It built a 3D model. And it does that because the cameras that they're using for this is detecting uh, distance and then mapping that, and a number of other things as well. But that's, it's been an updated cameras. Again, those cameras are already available to consumer ready products like the uh, Lenovo Fat 2. And the next one is Magic Leap. So Magic Leap is a really interesting company. I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this talk that they received billions of dollars in funding. And the reason why they received billions of dollars in funding is their goal is not to just have a headset. Their goal is to create essentially computer chips that you look for. And as it takes in light, it changes that light and displays it right into your retinas. So now, your field of view is not limited. It's like if you're wearing glasses. And that's your goal, is to be able to have these things in such a way that if you're wearing a pair of glasses, it would feel, it would look about the same. And that would probably go a long way from where Google Glass fit. It is quite easy to see that someone was wearing Google Glass. It is quite, it looked quite clumsy. But Magic Leap is looking to fix that. They're not releasing, they're not holding to a date. They're waiting until the product is done, but I believe that product's coming sooner. And so with these goals of like the virtual reality, this augmented reality, mixed reality, what we're seeing is a very, very strong push by big players, Microsoft, Google, um, I believe Apple is going to be on this, to start to change your perception of reality. And this is coming. And the good news from it coming is that we're aware of this, but we can be at the forefront. There's a lot of applications that can really, really, really work well with our vision base. Uh, if you think about from a vitality perspective, just having uh, a virtual coach that literally shows you how to do a certain exercise, or to show you how to take your blood pressure, or if you're diabetic, how to check uh, your blood glucose. I can go a long way in teaching a kid what is the right way to do something. So we can do those things. 
we need to start thinking a little bit because this technology is here, it's improving, and it's going to increase. So with that, um, I'm gonna open it up to some questions. Yeah, so it was kind of nice that you had that Minecraft video, so I've seen it. What they didn't really expand on in that particular video, I know they'll find, you know, the average of certain problems that you have, but it's the, the, the process of augmenting the augmentation, virtual tactile interaction, right? Where you can come up like you're walking down the sidewalk and you see a checkpoint or a point of interest. You know, is, can there be any applications that you're looking at that kind of tracks you breaking that plane of that augmentation to change the augmentation to something else or to cause that augmentation? Similar to the way that they were doing with a hand command, where they were kind of peeling back the layers of them, you know, what Mojang calls both chunks, right? We saw that sort of that recording effect on the display that they were showing. So the question was, uh, do uh, is there any applications or examples of applications where an individual changes the augmentation? Uh, at this time, I've not seen, it. Uh, but I believe very much so that, that is a natural progression. Um, if you look at HTC Vive, when you look at Oculus Rift, they've already added in controllers to track your hand movements. And it wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say it's out of the question to maybe have a glove that's just able to recognize your hand as it goes in and then recognize those changes. Um, there are examples of them using the Universal Windows app where they do interact with menus and stuff. Just literally, what they're using currently and this might change by the finished problem. Currently, they use hand gestures a lot and voice. That's how they interact with this. Again, that will likely improve the change. I don't have an exact example of what you're saying about the show. Very good. So the question was, how does the interior decorating apps judge distance? Is that correct? Yeah, distance and then uh, relative size. Okay. So with Project Tango, again, those apps, uh, the cameras, that actually determines scale on its own. That's what the cameras are intended to do and intended to accomplish. So when the, the Wayfair app that I was talking about earlier does it all matter. How other apps kind of mimic that though is they actually like the scale of not as user friendly, but that is more good. I guess I guess more under the hood. Oh, under the hood. So uh, the application again with Project Tango, I'm using that as an example because that's the one that's really pushing this forward. Uh, it just the camera, the SDK kind of hides that. It uses lasers.
to determine the distance, and then from that builds out a 3D map of the area. So that's a piece of fusion to the theory. Yes. It's one of the advantages to that. Thank you for the whole thing. Yes, it is. Are there any other questions?